And it's true. <laughs> it's true. But when you look at this stat, you look at this stat of him all time scoring, all time scoring, that, that's that's something you can't overlook. So he's up there. I guess we can say top three as of now, but he's gotta win a championship this year, which is gonna be extremely hard to do. So um I think it's a I think it's a great accomplishment. It shows his consistency, uh longevity uh, in the league. Um, you you got to play years in the league to to get to that. You know you got to you got to play years in the league. You got to be consistent um, to break a scoring title, to break any record. For the most part, um, it takes a lot of you know a lot of these records takes longevity, takes consistency, and things like that. Um, but I am sorry, he is not closer to Michael Jordan. He has <laughs> he has not gained any ground. I'm sorry. Uh, the bar. I mean, you look at these measurements. I mean, he's averaging 28 points a game. Jordan averaged 33 points a game in the playoffs, you know. Um, and and Jordan was just, you know, it was a switch that was turned on when the playoffs first started. You know, he was one of those people that went out to demoralize you. And I think LeBron is just learning that. You know, LeBron has been a good player. I think this year, between this year and last year, is the LeBron that probably we should have seen like 10 years ago, where – he comes out to make a statement to demoralize the opponent. I mean, I don't know if anybody watched that game uh, a couple of days ago. I mean, because because people already knew that the Cavs was going to win, you know. So let's get that. People knew that the Cavs was going to win um, and was going to beat uh, Boston, but he literally went out to demoralize Boston. That's what you're supposed to do as a champion, as as the greatest player on the floor. You knowing you're the greatest player, you're supposed to oppose your will on the team. Um, and for years, he didn't do that. You know, so I can't there's no way I could put him up there because Jordan Jordan went out every game to demoralize. He wanted to embarrass you as an opponent, you know, and then he might go take you to play golf afterwards. But <laughs> but he wanted to demoralize you when he got on the court, you know, and, and you know, it's just is they're just two different players. They're two different players. Um, I still got Jordan as the greatest. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's nobody in the league right now who can catch Jordan as the greatest, including LeBron. I'm sorry. You know, I think that that ship sailed already when he lost uh, the first two finals, you know, um, and there's no way to me. There's no way you can catch him. You know, you can never catch six and up. That's true. And the biggest thing about LeBron that a lot of us seem to overlook is that, yes, he's been to seven straight finals, but he's he's lost three of them. Uh, so. <laughs> It's not – Jordan didn't lose any finals. When Jordan went to the finals, you already knew it was going to be a win. It wasn't like, oh, let's see if this team can beat the Bulls. It was It was never that. It was always, this is Jordan's team, and Jordan's going to do whatever he has to do to win, and they're going to win. Um, Jay Fish, thank you, Jay Fish, for jumping in. Big uh, shout-out to you for jumping into the show. He says, uh, all-time scoring, but he came out of high school – Jordan played three years of college. Let's pump the brakes. That's a great point. That's a great. That's an excellent yeah. point. I mean, you also look at the, the the length of the series now. I mean, Jordan record would probably be a lot ho- higher if if uh, if there was more games in the series, like LeBron has benefited from. You know, um, LeBron has played more playoff games. You know, I mean these all these different factors. You know, and even still, you know, LeBron made more threes than Jordan. You know, we know Jordan wasn't a great three point shooter. Um, and, and that was a part of his game that he never really worked on because he didn't need to. You know, he he played, you know, within the paint, the mid range, uh, going to the rim and things like that. And so when you look at that, it's like, yeah, he caught him. Yeah, he he passed Jordan, but he's not. We <laughs> nobody's going to ever believe that LeBron James is a better scorer than Michael Jordan. Nobody's going to believe that. Nobody will ever question that. Michael yeah. Jordan is probably the greatest scorer we've seen in NBA history. Um, you know, him, Wilt, Chamberlain, you know, uh, even even Kareem is up there. And then, you know, for me, I, I, I've always argued that Kevin Durant is probably, you know, Kevin Durant, if he continues at his pace, he'll probably be the second greatest scorer in NBA history. And it's just because he does it so easily. There's no way to stop him. And that's how Jordan was. I mean, LeBron has a weakness. It's just that most people can't exploit it. <laughs> yeah. Most teams cannot exploit it. You know, but Michael Jordan was the perfect player. You know, he had no weakness on the court. Yeah, and, and the biggest thing I think about LeBron is that 
I, I would say out of all the players that we think of, he's probably the 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 best one that could play Billy Ball. That, that's that's his game. If you try to get in front of him, obviously it's going to be in the charge, or he's going to end up whining about a foul. Um, but the way he plays is hard to guard him when he's coming to the cold, to the hole. He's basically a, a dump truck coming to the hole, and it's hard to guard him. Um, Want to give a shout out to? Uh, I think I already said P Funk, but he says King James. Uh, also, he said uh, this was a funny comment, comment right here. He said, uh, "If you guys read your Bible." Make sure you read the King James Bible <laughs> in, in a relation to King James. But it, there, there's a lot. There's a lot that uh, that LeBron has done, but it's still. I think it's still going to match up to championships. And you have to have a certain amount of championships, I believe, to be in that elite group of guys. And he he doesn't have the numbers yet. He doesn't have the numbers, but I would still say top three. I think he's top three. Um, that that's and, that's my that's my opinion, and, and I agree with you as well. I just I just think that when you look at when you look at championships, when you look at everything that comes with the championships, how you win them, things like that. I just I don't I don't see LeBron being the greatest. I I see you know my my argument has always been Michael Jordan. After Michael Jordan, I have Kareem at number two. Um, I have Magic Johnson up there. But Michael Jordan and Kareem have, for me, have been the two greatest players. And you could argue in, in, in really because their impact on the game. You know, Michael Jordan won rings without having a true big. He never really had a center uh, in his inc- entire career. Um, he won uh, with, the, with, the, with, you know, playing great defense and being really just, you know, the, the, the number one option. You know, of course, Pippen put up points and things like that. But, I mean, there's never been... Nobody's ever on, on George's team has ever put up more than 20 points. You know, Pippen was the only one. You know, I mean, yeah. LeBron has had the luxury of having other players who were able to put up big, big games. You know, Jordan never had that. You know, and he didn't need it. You know, when Jordan, when the, when the lights were the bright, uh, when the lights were the brightest, Jordan stepped up and he dominated games. You know, you look at, you know, he had one series where he averaged 41 a game. I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, yeah. 41, eight, I think it was 41, 8, and 7. It's crazy. On 50% shooting. That's crazy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but you, that's what Jordan did. Point. You know, I was like, okay, you know, here, here's here's the team. And, you know, I need to I need to do more. He did more. And that was it. He, he took it upon himself. And so I, and, and because of that, Jordan will always be, like I said, Jordan is the greatest of me. Number two is Kareem. And after that, you can make an argument for LeBron. For Magic Johnson, for Will Chamberlain, all these other players, I think that just falls right behind, right underneath them two players. I think those two players are the greatest players. Yeah. Now, um, I want to welcome that ninja, that ninja in the building, in the BS3 Sports Show. Appreciate <laughs> you for jumping in. Also, the People's Champ. The People's Champ uh, comes in dropping knowledge. He says 6'4 in the finals is better than... Then 6-0 in the finals. LeBron still has a chance. He still has a chance, but he's got to get those six championships. That's I, I mean, that's what it all comes down to. I think that's that's when the argument takes it to the next level. Right now, it's still just an argument, and you, you're more just a homer than anything. But to get it to that next level, he's got to match up with championships. And that's, uh, that's what it's got to be. Ah, uh, six four ain't better than six zero. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. And it, and it, and it, like I said, you know, for me, the Dallas Mavericks series, the Dallas Mavericks series for me wipes like, hey, there's no way that you could ever put him over Jordan after the Dallas Mavericks series. Seventeen points a game. It was terrible. He had a terrible series in a in a series that he was favored in. They were favored to beat Dallas, and Dallas, he got outscored by by a bench player. I'm sorry, he got outscored. Jason Terry averaged more points than LeBron James. I mean, it's in the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the discussion. I mean, at that point, your legacy, I mean, it's over. Like, you can be second or third best. You can't be the best, though. You can't get outscored by Jason Terry. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's a good point. All of these series that he's been to, how many what, was he really, you know, what you're expecting somebody to be? And I think that's that's a lot of what it comes down to. Um, also, we got JY3, JY3 in the building. Appreciate you for jumping in. 
All right, so we got some free agents that may possibly moving. I, I had to talk about these couple of guys right here. Uh, Chris Paul. Chris Paul to the Spurs. This has been floating around, I believe, today and yesterday. Do no. not sleep on this. I think this has no. a possibility of happening. No. This is... <laughs> No, no, you don't see it no. happening. No, you it's a terrible it fit. No, it's terrible <laughs> fit. No, if if the Spurs are always linked to every free agent, at, at really at the end of the day, <laughs> um, but it, it, are they going to be willing to spend the money? Uh, Tony Parker is as good as done. Uh, we'll talk about Manu in a minute, but I'm pretty sure he's as good as done. Um, Patty Mills is decent. But he's not hes not your everyday point guard. He's an off-the-bench player, just plain and simple. As much as you want to doubt it or as much as people don't want to believe it, he's an off-the-bench type of player. So if if they could somehow do that, which I don't think they're going to do it because Chris Paul is going to demand a certain amount of money. He's going to demand a max deal. You already gave a max deal or close to it to Aldridge. Uh, but what's your thoughts? So I heard you chiming in. <laughs> so, so I, I've I've been hearing the rumors. I've heard the rumors. I've I've heard Spurs fans say, "Oh my God, we got a chance to get Chris Paul." I I don't see it happening, and and I'll break down the reasons why. Number one, cap space. Right, Spurs will have to clear a bunch of cap space for Chris Paul to come. Right now, even with Ginobili, a couple other players coming off the books, they would only have about six million dollars in cap space. That is not enough money to sign Chris Paul. Chris Paul is going to ask for a max. He's going to get a max. And this is his last opportunity to get a max contract because the new CBA deal allows a player of his caliber and his age to now sign a full max extension and get that money. So he's going to, this would be his last contract, his last big contract. He's going to go get his money. That's number one. Number two, the fit. It's not a good fit. Now, defensively, it is a great fit. You have Chris Paul and 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 uh and uh Kawhi Leonard and even Jonathan Simmons, who's a really really good defender. Them three would create nightmares being in the game at the same time on the wing. They would create nightmares defensively. But offensively, Chris Paul is a player who needs the ball in his hands. And just like the uh, just like the Warriors, the Spurs run a motion offense. They're constantly moving the ball. They want to move the ball. Chris Paul does not do that. And so because of that, I just don't think that's a good fit. I think that you would take the ball uh, out of the hands of Kawhi a lot more. And so he would he would be the one that would uh, suffer. Kawhi Leonard would suffer from that pairing. Um, mm-hmm. I think that they already have the point guard of their future in their team and DeJounte Murray, who shows some really good things during the playoffs. And you got to you got to stay the course. And Greg Popovich is good about staying the course. So I see I don't see them adding Chris Paul. I do see them adding another player, another veteran, but not Chris Paul. I just I don't think he's a great fit. Okay. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I think um w- with Chris Paul, he's he's a he's an interesting player. Um a lot of some people see him as a top point guard in the league. A lot of people don't. Um some people see that he's injury prone, which he has been and a lot of these, when it gets to crunch time, when you need Chris Paul, he's either going to be hurt or his excuse is, I don't have my players around me. And that's been the, <laughs> that's been the issue with the Clippers for a long time now. Um, and I think if, if you put him, if he somehow gets on this Spurs team, that automatically, I think that automatically puts them in a spot where they can win the West. Oh, I, I, I agree. I agree. I just don't cap space for me. For me, Chris Paul, um, Chris, like I said, Chris Paul dribble. He's a traditional point guard, and the game has changed so much that traditional point guards um, aren't nearly as important uh, as a scoring guard in today's game. And you look at you look at the All NBA teams. You look at you know. The all NBA teams is filled with, with with guards who score. And that's it. And even you look at the NBA, you look at the finals. You got two guards that can score in the finals. Kyrie Irving and Stephen Curry. You know, two guards that can score. You know, that's where the game is went to. And in order for you to really be able to compete, you have to have a guard who can score. And that's not to say that Chris Paul can't score. 